eerie, gory, and puzzling are the three words that describe this grim movie the best. It begins on May 26 at a train station during a busy night as everyone returns from work or school. A large group of students approaches a platform. They then grab hands and together they jump in front of an incoming train, creating a pool of blood and gore. Someone leaves a sports bag and blood flows everywhere. Then we get to see a concert by a J-pop group called Dessert. In a hospital, two nurses talk in their office while listening to a new song from Dessert. One of them goes out to buy some food and asks the security guard to open the main front door for her. He opens the door and then returns to his office, but suddenly he hears a creepy noise. The security guard goes to the nurse's office and finds an open window. There is no trace of the second nurse. The other nurse comes back from shopping with food and asks where the other one is. The security guard tells her that she probably left, and the nurse replies that he can have her food then and proceeds to jump from the window. Then a sports bag slides into the room. We go to a police station where we meet our protagonists, Detectives Kuroda and Shibusawa. The two of them have a meeting with other detectives in which they discuss the mass suicide at the train station. One of the detectives, Murata, informs them that 54 girls from 18 different schools committed suicide. Shibusawa then gets a call from a hacker who calls herself The Bat, and she notifies him she found a website that has a link to suicides. She tells him the web address, and when Shibusawa opens the website, he finds a bunch of red and white dots. The Bat explains that red dots are females, while the white ones are males, and every time someone takes their life, a dot appears. On May 27th, the police find the sports bag from the hospital, while Kuroda and Shibusawa retrieve one from the train station. In it, they find a cinnamon roll made out of human skin. They analyze it with doctors and find out that each roll has precisely 100 pieces of human skin. The doctor explains to two detectives that every part is probably from a different human. Shibusawa notices a tattoo on one piece of skin. Afterward, the doctor shows them the body of the nurse with a piece of skin missing, saying that it's probably in the roll. On May 28th, a group of students is messing around on a high school's roof during a break, talking about suicides and joking that they are members of a suicide club. Well, it turns out that they are dead serious as they commit mass suicide by jumping off the roof. The police arrive and question the students, but they don't get any helpful answers. Kuroda suggests to his colleagues that they should open a criminal investigation, but Murata ditches his suggestion and tells him that all of this is just a suicide fad. On May 29th, we see a girl named Mitsuko on her way home. Suddenly, she gets hit by her boyfriend, who has thrown himself off a roof. Mitsuko is taken to the police station for questioning. Kuroda and Shibusawa find out that a piece of skin from the skin roll belongs to Mitsuko's dead boyfriend. At the same time, Murata is interrogating her, but he doesn't get anything helpful. Then, the police examine Mitsuko, and Shibusawa finds out that she has the same tattoo as her boyfriend. After the examination, he gives Mitsuko his number and tells her to call him if she remembers anything that could help them. That night, Shibusawa tries to figure out the website with dots, but the whole thing is too puzzling, and he doesn't find anything useful. Then we see the bat, whose real name is Kyoko, investigating the suicide phenomenon with her friend and uploading her speculations on social media. Kuroda returns home, and after family dinner, his son shows him a weird website he found. While the website is loading, Kuroda sees a chain message. Spread this if you want to halt suicides. Kuroda creates an account on the website, and at the same time, Murata receives a call at the police station from a little boy who wants to speak to Kuroda. Murata tells him that Kuroda will be back in the station the next morning and to call then. On May 30th, Kuroda receives a call from the boy who informs him that tonight at 7.30, another mass suicide will take place at the same platform as before. The detectives organize a stakeout to prevent the event. They watch everyone closely at the train station, but everything seems normal, and the whole situation becomes nerve-wracking for them. Soon, Kuroda and Shibusawa spot a group of students holding their hands at the train platform as the train approaches. They quickly go to stop them, but then find out they just wanted to get on the train. The detectives call it a day and leave the train station. 
Meanwhile, we witness a mass suicide spree. A group of actors hangs themselves. A stand-up comedian stabs himself in the neck with a knife. A street food vendor overdoses with meds. And one woman places her head in an oven. In one household, father and daughter are watching a dessert concert. He tells her to check on her mother and how dinner is going. The daughter then sees a horrifying sight of her mother slicing her fingers in hand. She continues to cut herself until she bleeds to death. Kuroda returns to his unusually empty home. While he is taking off his shoes, his daughter greets him, covered in blood from head to toe. In a flash, she disappears, and Kuroda discovers blood all over the floor when he turns around. As he explores the house, he finds the name of one of the songs from Dessert written in blood on a wall. He finds his family dead. And when his colleagues arrive, they discover that every family member has a missing piece of skin. Murata tells Kuroda that this is now a murder investigation and that he will try his best to find the source of this monstrosity. Kuroda receives a call from the boy who had warned him about suicide. The boy starts dissing him, saying that he wasn't there for his family when they needed him because he was too focused on work. That pushes Kuroda over the edge. He puts a gun in his mouth and pulls the trigger, then examines Kuroda's computer. He finds a bunch of unknown links and he tells Murata to get the names of all the providers. At the same time, Kyoko and her friend are browsing through social media when they receive a message that says, look behind. They turn around and see three unknown men behind them. They detain Kyoko, place a sheet over her head, and order her to inform the police that she is being kidnapped. Attackers then take them to an abandoned bowling alley, and soon Kyoko and her friend meet the head of the suicide club, a man called Genesis, who is acting all theatrical. He is being friendly with Kyoko, and he adjusts her glasses. However, one of his captives annoys Genesis, and he stomps them to death. Genesis then sits on his awesome chair and tells his men they should entertain Kyoko and her friend. One of the men gets under a sheet where a person is trapped, and he starts killing them. While the other one starts playing piano, Genesis starts singing, and he pulls out his guitar and performs an absolute banger of a song. Later, Kyoko manages to get on a computer and emails Shibusawa that she was kidnapped. Genesis appears behind her with his men and tells her to reveal their location. Kyoko struggles, so he pushes her off the chair and sends the exact location, followed by a confession that he is the leader of the suicide club. On May 31st, the police arrest Genesis and his men, and while they are taking them away, Genesis tries to give a speech to a camera about how he is the Charles Manson of the information age. Then he starts singing one of the dessert songs. On June 1st, we see Mitsuku wandering around the city, lethargic, thinking about her dead boyfriend. She goes to his home to return his helmet. In his room, Mitsuko notices pop group desserts posters on the wall, and she recognizes a pattern on the fingers of the group that corresponds to the letters on a telephone keypad spelling out the word suicide. She combines the numbers from the group member's outfits and calls it. The creepy boy answers and reveals that there isn't any suicide club, and he invites her to a secret concert. On June 2nd, Mitsuko uses the suicide number to get backstage. There, she finds a bunch of creepy kids. They tell her that if she dies, her connection with her dead boyfriend will remain, and they ask her why she keeps living. Confusing, I know. Mitsuko then goes to a stage, and kids from the audience ask her if she has a connection with herself and cares about herself, even if her boyfriend died. Basically, they want to know if she has a reason to live, even if her boyfriend is dead. It's not explained, but it seems that they didn't have a reason to live, became their victim, and killed themselves. Mitsuko tells the children that she has a connection with herself and that she wants to live. That impresses them, and they take her to a room where they shave off her skin with the butterfly tattoo. The police soon find a new skin roll, and Detective Shibusawa recognizes a strip of Matusko's skin because of her tattoo. That night, he sees Mitsuko at the train station and grabs her hand, but she pulls it away. She stares at Shibusawa as the train pulls into the station, and again after boarding the train. As the train pulls out, the ending credits begin, in which Dessert announces their disbandment, 
and offers their appreciation for their fan support before performing their final song, Live As You Please. The movie ends here with an open ending that leaves you thinking about it, looking for answers. If you enjoyed this movie recap, make sure to hit the like button. And if you want to see more of these, subscribe to the channel and check out our other videos.